What happens if you're the victim of a vicious dog attack? Your life is in danger. You're about to be killed by a dog. A big 100 pound vicious dog. I'm going to tell you two real life stories and both dogs are dead. Both good guys have separate outcomes. First good guy takes a 12 gauge, blasts the bad dog, turns it into spaghetti sauce. Second good guy takes his 45 out, 1911, blasts the bad dog, takes it out, turns it into spaghetti squash. Two opposite outcomes. One guy's got major problems with the law, and another guy has zero problems, just the opposite. This is all about defending yourself, and then also, after you defend yourself, how do you defend yourself with the law? Welcome to WeaponsEducation.com. Let's talk about two real life case scenarios in which a good guy had to defend his life against a bad dog. Now I want to make this disclaimer right up front. I am a dog lover. I'm an animal lover. At one time I had six chows all at once. I mean I know about owning vicious dogs. I had six all at once. Loved them all. Um, right now I'm still a dog lover of course. I own a Pomeranian. I have a cat. I love animals. But unfortunately, bad people sometimes bring up bad, vicious animals and they attack people. Let's talk about two real case scenarios, true stories, and let me get right into it right now. Situation number one. This guy's an attorney, he's a smart guy. He's walking his little dog like a poodle, a little small poodle. He's eating an apple through his neighborhood. He's walking his dog. And here comes this big, vicious attack dog, 100 plus pound dog, doesn't matter the breed, and with pit bull, doesn't matter, something like that, okay? This, I'll just call him an attack dog, attacks his little poodle, and is almost killing the dog. The attorney is like, takes his apple, throws it at the dog, that didn't work, at the bad dog, then he kicks the bad dog, and now the bad dog lurches at him at his crotch. Well, what are you going to do? You're armed, you're legally armed, you got your permit. He takes out his 1911, he shoots the bad dog, blows it in half, kills it. The owner of the bad dog sees the whole thing unfold. He's about 100 feet away. He comes up, he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I almost saw your dog getting killed, and I almost seen you getting killed. I'm so... I'm just so glad you are. Are you okay? What's your name? And the attorney goes, oh, I'm Bill. And he goes, oh, I'm Johnny. And oh my gosh, my dog is dead, but at least you're okay. Well, where do you live? And the attorney goes, I live over there. And I was just walking my dog and, and, your, and your vicious attack dog attacked my dog and me. I, I'm sorry, I had to kill your dog. The guy goes, yeah, I, I seen the whole thing unfold and I broke the leash laws. I should have had my attack dog on a leash. Let's not cause any commotion. Let's just let it go. I'm sorry this whole thing happened. I'm, I'm glad you're okay. So the guy puts 45 by then, he put the 45 away. He figures the whole thing is it's over with. You know, the guy was sorry. And that was it. So he goes home. The guy gets a wheelbarrow. The owner of the dog gets a wheelbarrow, gets his dog, and takes it home. Well, about a half hour later. Attorney gets a knock on his door from the police. Did you shoot a dog a half hour ago? Yeah, I guess you know the story by now. He goes, I was attacked. My crotch was attacked. My little dog, look at the wounds. Oh yeah? That's not the story we got over here. Turns out, the owner of the vicious dog was not the guy who witnessed the whole thing. He was just a boyfriend of someone in the household and the girl's father is a wealthy businessman 
And he comes home and sees the dead dog in a wheelbarrow and goes, what's going on? And the boyfriend goes, this you know, young guy goes, I don't know, some guy with a big gun shot the dog. He shot your dog, my future father-in-law. I'm calling the police. Father-in-law, wealthy father-in-law, dials 911. Please come. It's that house over there. He's the guy wielding this big monster gun, shooting dogs at random. Please get to his house. Um, we'd like to talk to you about the shooting. Attorney goes, oh, you know, like I said, I thought this whole thing was diffused. Um, attorney goes, I need to talk to you tomorrow. You need a, a warrant to speak to me. All right, so they come the next day with a warrant. Make a long story short, they throw the book at him. Seven, eight charges, felony charges. He goes through years and years and years of a nightmare, of a legal nightmare. Civil lawsuits, his name smeared through the mud on the internet, in the news, he's an attorney, he loses all his clients, his life's ruined. Ultimately, after two to three years of litigation, he ultimately got off most of the charges and came out okay, but his career was not okay and he lived a, a living nightmare for two years. Case number two, true story. Very, very true stories, these are real. True story, case number two. A uh, private investigator, processor, serving papers that a judge wants a bad guy to have. He knocks on the door. Are you Mr. Jones? Yeah, guy answers the door, yeah, I'm Mr. Jones. Oh, no big deal, sir. I'm sorry, but I got these papers I have to sign for, and I'll be on my way. I don't want those papers, he goes. You get off my property right now, or I'm going to unleash this attack dog on you, and my dog is going to kill you. So the processor goes, all right, um, you're not going to accept this, this, this paperwork, and you're going to force your dog to kill me? The guy, Mr. Jones, is like, yeah, you get off my property, get in your car, or my dog is going to kill you. He gets in his car, he walks 50 feet to his car. You know what Mr. Jones, the bad guy, does? He goes, huh. go get him, go get him, he tells his attack dog. Attack dog attacks him, bites him in the arm, in the car. And what does he do? The good guy, the processor, takes a 12-gauge shotgun, like this, pistol grip shotgun, blasts the dog with a double-out buck, turns it into marinara sauce, blasts it all over the street, Except he did something different that the first guy didn't do. He picked up the phone very calmly. This is so-and-so. I'm a private investigator. I just shot a dog with a 12-gauge. The um, firearm is secure. It's in the trunk of my car at this moment. I'll be standing here with my hands above my head. I'm at this location. Please come and investigate. Please come. They uh, collaborate the story. It's very accurate. And the bad guy, Mr. Jones, the police walk up to him and says, Sir, you're under arrest for assault and battery with a deadly weapon. A dog is a deadly weapon. They cuff him and stuff him, throw him in the, in the police car. And then they said, by the way, here's the papers the judge wants you to have. Two totally different outcomes because the first guy didn't dial 911. So the moral of these two stories are, if you have to engage and shoot an animal in self-defense, don't think just because it's an animal, it's not a big deal. We'll talk about shooting, a, heaven forbid, a human being in the future and, and what I think you should do. It, we'll, we'll talk about that in a separate video, what I would do. You know, I'm not going to blabber off everything as soon as the police come. I'll, I'll just say, you know, I'm willing to work with you in this investigation. I need to get some legal advice, this, that, and the other. That's a separate video. We're talking about dogs attacking you. You shoot the dog. What do you do? What if there's a rabid raccoon in the yard? You shoot that animal. Should you call the police? Or just like act like it never happened? In some cities across America, this is true. You know this. If you live in a, in, in a big metro area, a gun goes off. 45 goes off. <coughs> They have like these radar systems, this high technology that will narrow it down within 50 feet of where that sound came from. The police are coming either way. You better call the police if you pull the trigger of a gun and you're in a city limits. Okay? This is a lot of different ways these, these situations can go. But I wanted to talk to you about those two dog attacks. One guy got in big trouble with the law. The other guy got in zero trouble and the bad guy got arrested. All right? So please. Do what's right. Defend yourself. 
if you have to save your life and then defend yourself on the legal side. Have your attorney's phone number in your phone. Call 911. Remember that you, know, you have the right to remain silent and this, that, and the other. We'll talk about all this some more in future videos. Don't get yourself in trouble after you just defended your life. That's what this is all about. Think about these things before they happen. What to do in case of a dog attack. That's all. That was on my mind today. Thanks for tuning in. Please throw in your comments. I'm a dog lover. Let's just make sure we do the right thing if we have to defend our life. That's what this is all about. Please tell a friend. Please subscribe. Check it out for now.